Hi, my name is Barry Schwartz. This is the Search Buzz video recap. Today is Friday, June 10th, and I wanted to give you the uh, recap over the past week of search news that we covered over at the Search and Roundtable at seroundtable.com. Uh, let's start with Panda, Panda 2.2. Um, I think it was Tuesday afternoon, we heard some early reports that people were suggesting that Panda uh, was getting an update. The update um, was being nicknamed 2.2. Uh, but it was very, very early on, and we weren't really sure if it was really legit or not. Um, so, so the, the update continued, and uh, I had to go offline Tuesday night. Um, and then this morning, or last night, I did some more research to see what was going on. Um, and then, uh, you know, XMX happened. I asked uh, Danny and Matt over at Search and Land to ask Matt Cutts um, about the 2.2 update. They asked him in the U and... Uh, Matt Cutts uh, keynote uh, presentation at the XMX event um, and Matt Cutts that said said 2.2 has been completed but it wasn't really actually pushed out yet so it's coming out soon he didn't say exactly when um, but he also said that this update is going to go ahead and target more of the uh, scraper sites that they missed in the past he did not say if it's going to actually help any sites recover in the future um, so we're not exactly sure what the status of that is um, but we know there was a few updates, obviously in February, that's when Panda came out originally. Two months after that, or a month or so after that, Panda 2.0 came out, which was a major 2% change to the 12% change. And then 2.1 came out, which is a small, uh, little hiccup um, a month after that. And now it's pretty much a month or so after that, and we're waiting for a 2.2, 3.0 update, which should be coming out soon. We still don't know when or exactly what, but should be targeting scraper sites as well. And we don't know if it'll actually fix any problems. We have a whole list of details of what I just said and more details on June 10th at seroundtable.com. Um, let's go over our monthly Google Webmaster report. We posted this on June 7th. It's the June 2011 Google Webmaster report. And in short, it's mostly more Panda stuff. Um, there were a lot of discussions in the new thread over at Webmaster World about this Panda 2.2 update. But again, like that never happened as of yet according to Matt Cutts, Google. Um, we have some of the most important topics we discussed over the past month and most of it's Panda, some of it's SEO, um, and some plus one features and stuff like that. So you can definitely get a core, or core recap of what's going on at Google in terms of webmaster related stuff um, at June 7th at seroundtable.com. Moving on to Bing, Bing announced uh, uh, yesterday the day before that, um, that they have revamped some of their webmaster tools features um, one of the cool features is that uh, they added a new crawl setting that allows people to do crawl delays based on time of the day, uh, which is nice to see. You can actually see the crawl patterns over the day, and you can actually say crawl faster at night, crawl slower during the day, and stuff like that. This drag with drag and drop Ajax type of functionality to handle that, which is nice. Uh, they also revamped the Index Explorer, which is now fresher, there's faster performance, it's more extendable. There's a lot more stuff going on with Index Explorer that you can take a look at. And also they ex expanded the user and um, user group management system to see who, who you delegate access to your Bing, Bing Webmaster tool. So definitely take a look at that. It's pretty cool. We have posted about it on June 10th today at seroundtable.com. Um, Google talked a little bit more about how to, how to handle web ma um, sorry mobile SEO topics. Uh, something that I've been talking about for a while now. Um, and John Moo, uh, Googler, John, uh, who's been covering a lot of this stuff, basically went ahead and backed me up a little bit saying that for smartphone related uh, content, when you do a smartphone CSS template for your site, like we have it at SCRoundtable.com, like something that works in the iPhone, Android, again, those are stuff that is not in Google's mobile index. Mobile is not, in Google's mind at least, a smartphone. It is a old fashioned Nokia device. And he said for those types of things, you could definitely serve up a separate URL with separate content, but he definitely recommends using one URL and not redirecting. All you're doing is changing the, the, the user template. So it actually looks different, but renders nicely on, on a smartphone. Uh, we have more information about that, and I think it's definitely valuable to read because more and more sites are going mobile and smart mobile, smartphone and mobile, on June 6th at seroundtable.com. Uh, good, good news, Google Analytics um, is adding slowly, at least, the ability to see your search query reports from Google Webmaster Tools. So Google Webmaster Tools added, added some really nice features in the past, letting you, giving you the ability to see impressions and search queries and ranking reports and stuff like that within Google Webmaster Tools. And everybody's been asking, can we have this in Google Analytics so we can do some more uh, you know, data analysis on it? And Google said, yes, you can. Um, coming in about a month or so, you can actually sign up for a pilot now and maybe get in. 
is the ability to say get under the traffic sources a, a report for uh, your search engine optimization. This includes the summaries, queries, landing landing pages, which you can then mash up into other reports using the Google uh, Analytics uh, um, query generator or report generation tool. It's very very cool. Um, you should definitely take a look at it, and uh, we'll uh, you know hopefully you'll get access to this soon. We have more screenshots and information on June eighth. SCRoundtable.com. Uh, Google added an authorship tag. Authorship tag basically lets you define what stories a specific author wrote on your blog or news site. Um, it's a new markup, rich snippet markup, and Google said um, it may be used as a ranking signal in the future, so you definitely want to take a look at that. Um, more information um, about that um, at, on June 9th at SCRoundtable.com. Another feature Google added this week was uh, the ability to show more uh, pictures in the search results um, and plus a hover over image. So now, if you do a search that triggers a picture um, in, Google in Google Web Search, like you do a search of flowers up or water, Google will show pictures and you hover over that piece of that picture and actually bounce that picture out, give you a better view of that picture. Uh, at the same time, if you add the word pictures or, picture or images or photos, Google will then show you a lot more images. Um, on the web search results page, which is nice, I think, and it works out pretty well. It looks pretty nice, in my opinion. Um, a month or so ago, Google came out with a new rich snippet tag called the Prayer Times rich snippet tag. I found very interesting that because I launched a sh uh, system called Shul Site, S H U L S I T E dot com, which basically is a way to make uh, websites and counting systems and more things for synagogues. And this is the, the prayer times really applies mostly to the Islamic or the uh, Jewish uh, religions because those are ba their prayer times are based off of sunrise, sunset, and other factors based on how the sun, when the time the sun comes up and goes down. And to figure out times for prayer times for those religions can be a bit confusing. So Google made a rich snippet tag, which basically allows uh, religious websites like synagogue websites or mosque websites and stuff like that to go ahead and create a rich snippet which then could, if your page ranks well for a with that page that has the, the, the actual prayer times ranks well Google will show a rich snippet of that content. Um, so I have some screenshots of how this works on June 7th but the main issues I have include um, sometimes Jewish prayer times are ranking well for Islamic prayer times and vice versa for queries Again, that's probably not a main issue because people who are Jewish probably know the difference between uh, Islamic prayer times and not. And two is um, the customs vary within even within even Judaism and also I'm sure within even the, uh, the you know, Islam. So I assume that's somewhat of a complicated thing. But at the same time, Google does share a calculation method. I just wish they had a way to specify religion so that Google will not show a search snippet when it doesn't apply when specifically somebody saying Jewish and an Islamic time comes up. Anyway, hopefully that makes sense. If not, we have more information about that on June 7th at seroundtable.com. Um, SEO Moz released their their 2011 S uh, search ranking studies. Uh, they polled, I think, about uh, 130 so SEOs, um, and they correlated that data with uh, a lot of data they have on themselves. Um, and it's been about two years since they posted their. Uh, search ranking factor study. Um, so it's out there now if you want to take a look at it. We have links to it on June 10th at scroundtable.com. Also, um, Danny Sullivan released a cool little uh, uh, infographic, I guess you call it that. It's basically a periodic table for SEO ranking factors. It's very, very cool. Um, it's hard to show on the screen, so just take a look at it. It's just do a search for SEO ranking factors periodic table or SEO periodic table. I'm sure it'll come up. Or go to our blog at June 6th at SRTable.com and it's very, very useful and cool and hopefully you guys will get a kick out of it as well. Um, Google AdSense uh, publishers, you might notice that the little I logo on uh, the Google AdSense icon has changed to a triangle and now says Ad Choices as part of their initiative to more standardize their ad displays or display ads with the uh, Ad Choices uh, uh, thing that is promoted across the web. Um, so that's changed and now it's been live. Google uh, warned us about a month or so ago that this was going to happen and then it's done. Um, Google has uh, eliminated their a lot of their vertical search engines that were launched years and years ago, back pretty much when Google launched. Um, one was this, one search that was uh, removed was Google's Uncle Sam search, basically government search, 
which was at google.com slash Uncle Sam, now it redirects to the homepage. Google said it's no longer needed because of all the advanced search queries that Google has. A lot of people disagree, but anyway, um, it's gone and Google said we don't no longer need it. It's gone also as well as google.com slash Linux, um, google.com slash about, slash Mac, slash Linux, slash BSD, slash Microsoft. All those are gone, um, no longer needed. Um, Google's a new search engine, I guess, and they no longer find it relevant. Uh, we have more information about that on June 6th at seriontable.com. Um, let me just quickly run through some polls and we'll wrap up. I posted uh, five or so polls this week because I was offline for two days. Um, in short, many many SEOs feel Google and Bing should offer spam incentives. 57% uh, said yes, Google should offer Bing, Google and Bing should offer incentives for people to report spam. Um, we posted that on June 9th. Um, three years later, SEOs still won't rat each other out. Um, we posted a poll. Um, you know, three years ago, um, which basically said 30% would report spam to Google, um, but I totally the poll. I thought the poll would actually reverse, and I thought more SEOs would actually report more spam to Google. It did not. Um, only about 40% said they would report spam to Google, which is still, I think, pretty low for the industry. 44% um, say social signals don't improve search results. The poll asking, do you think the search results are better with social? factors ranking in, and 44% said no. 73% said personalizations, uh, personalized search results is a form of censor censorship. Basically, Google personalizing my search result is censoring out content that I would would, would want to see otherwise, and it's, I don't like it. So 73% said that, that it's, a, it's a form of censorship. Final poll, which I think is the most significant one, is 85% say they have no, not had they had zero recovery from Google's Panda update. Uh, if you break it down, um, if I break it down for you, 73% um, said, specifically out of all the people I'm polling, um, we have over 500 results, it's a tremendous number of results. 73% um, they did not recover from Panda. 8% um, said they recovered somewhat, but not fully. 4% said they had a full recovery. And 50% they said it didn't apply to them. So if you take all that and mash it up, really 85% said they, they did not recover when you pull out the NAs, not applicables. Um, Finally, there was some Google Doodles. Um, we had the Richard Scary Doodle, I think it was on Sunday, which is uh, a book publisher, a book uh, author, who was celebrating his 92nd birthday, who died several years ago. Um, and Les Paul's logo was yesterday, which is actually still live today. If you do go to google.com, you'll be able to see the Les Paul logo, which actually lets you play with it, which is pretty cool. Um, it was his 96th birthday, um, and there was one person who actually complained that it was actually wasting about 10 megawatts of power worldwide. Um, interesting tidbit. Anyway, that pretty much recaps the Search Buzz video recap. Today is Friday, June 6th. My name is Barry Schwartz, and thanks so much for listening. We'll see you guys next week. Everyone have a great uh, weekend. Bye.